We are going to talk about correlation versus causation. So we're continuing on with linear regression, but we are going to look specifically at these words because they can be really confusing. Um, it's easy to get tricked by correlation and causation um, whenever you're given data or a chart or two variables. So let's look at what the two words are. So correlation is two events or variables that are related as shown in the data. So correlation is just there's a relationship. So they're just related. Causation, though, says two events or variables has have a cause and effect relationship. There's this phrase that people use. Um, it's, it says correlation doesn't imply causation. We are going to look at what that means. So I'm going to show you a couple of memes. Okay, the first one's on the left. Correlation is not causation. So we have a chart with the months on the bottom, and then we have the two different variables, ice cream sales and shark attacks. So what do you think you're trying to be tricked into thinking right there? They're both higher in the summer. So what you're trying to be tricked into thinking is one causes the other. So do ice cream sales cause shark attacks? No. No. No, no they don't. <laughs> but what causes both of them? Or what makes more of those things increase? Or being those things? Hot. It being hot. Because look at the months that it is. July through September. Or July and August, really. So the hotter it is, the more ice cream sales. So that's a causation. More shark attacks happen during summer months. That's a causation. But do these two cause each other? No. They have a relationship because as they increase, they increase together. As one increases, so does the other. Both ice cream cells and shark attacks increase when the weather is hot and sunny. But they are not caused by each other. They are caused by good weather. With lots of people at the beach, both eating ice cream and, ha eating ice cream and having fun in the sea. Okay, look at the next one. What do you think we're, that has to do with what we're talking about? Um, she's, not the one that the fire. she's not the one that caused the fire, but what does her look say? Like she did it. Like she, did it. <laughs> she was mad at the babysitter, so she started the fire. So correlation does not imply causation. So she's trying to tell you, just because I look guilty doesn't mean I did it. The next one, the one on the left, correlation doesn't imply causation. We have sales, which is in red, versus mustache length, which is in blue. It says clearly there's a lot of room for growth. So what is he trying to imply? Uh, yeah, that you need to grow a mustache in order to sell more. So this guy is looking pretty good. What about these two? They're, they're a little nervous. They're like, so I'm not going to be able to sell just because I can't grow a mustache? Just because I'm a woman, I can't grow a mustache, you know? Look at the next one. So how many of you this has happened? You've walked into a room, and there is a complete mess, and your dog or cat is in there. What do you assume right away? They did it. But what is this cat you know, trying to use. He's trying to say, just because I'm here doesn't mean I did it. My dog, uh, Zoe, I don't know if y'all have met her. I'm, I think I brought her one time last year. She's not very friendly. Um, but she's like, she's a big dog. She's a Shih Tzu. You know, Butters is real skinny, but she's, she's a bigger dog. But she likes to sit on the end tables in the living room, on a table. I don't know why. But one day I walked into the living room. My cup of water was all over the floor, and she was sitting on the end table. 
So what did I assume right away? She did it. I looked at her. I was like, because you're here and you're on the table, my cup was on the table and it's not anymore. I assumed she did it. But what if one of my kids did it? Yeah, my kid could have done it. Olivia makes big old messes all the time. And Aiden, he throws balls around in the house or uses his Nerf gun. So just because two things are correlated doesn't it mean that one calls the other. Let's look at the next one. This one kind of goes along with our class sometimes. Yes, I'm late for class. Yes, I have an iced coffee. But remember, a correlation does not imply causation. So next time I look at you, because you have your iced coffee and you're coming in late, you can give me that line. <laughs> the next one, what's freaking us out here is that you've, uh, is that we've found a correlation between owning cats and being struck by lightning. Does that even make sense? No. But why is he freaking out? Because he owns cats. Yeah. And this guy's laughing. So as you own cats, your risk of being struck by lightning increases. That doesn't even make sense. But that's what the graph shows. The more cats you have, the more chances uh, or the more likely you're to get struck by lightning. So what I want you to do now is discuss what it means and sum up your meaning, sum up the meaning in your own words. So talk with your group about it and decide what we could write down for correlation doesn't imply causation. Y'all can talk about it with your group. Wait, Miss Sons, are you doing the are we like making one or are we No, you are just Sum up the meaning in your own words. What does correlation doesn't imply causation mean in your own words? So instead of using correlation and causation, use other words. I know what it means. What does it mean? If you're at something, then you did it. Does it always mean that? Yes. No. no. Does anybody have any ideas of what they think? Webster. Just because it looks a certain way doesn't mean it is. Like the whole assumption thing. Okay, the, the way that I wrote it is a lot of events are related, but that does not mean one caused the other. So just because the cat was sitting there doesn't mean he caused all that mess on the floor. Just because someone walks in late with their iced coffee doesn't mean that's the reason why they're late. <laughs> just because Zoe was sitting on the, the table doesn't mean she made my drink fall on the floor. But most likely she did, you know. So a lot of events are related, but that does not mean one caused the other. The problem with correlation is that we often assume causation. When we think two events are cause and effect, we can be persuaded by correlated data into believing that we have proof of cause and effect. 
So that word assume, is it good to assume certain things? No. Assuming things isn't always the best thing that you can do. <clears throat> Examples, students at schools with uniforms have higher test results. Do we have uniforms at our school? But are our test results pretty good? Yeah. Yeah. So just because the school has uniforms doesn't cause them to have higher test results. What other things could be an, a factor? Teachers, the particular student. What if it's a private school? Yeah. People pay to go there, so those parents are going to be like, you better do your work. You better try really hard. Doctors notice that patients taking a new vitamin live longer than the average person. Yeah. Is there such thing as a miracle drug? The fountain of youth? Is that, is that a thing? Do we see this on commercials, though? Yeah. Like this miracle cream is going to make you look 20 years younger. Yeah, sure, right? <laughs> or what about that supplement that's going to make you have a six-pack? Oh, yeah. Is that real? Is that really going to cause it? If you continue to eat junk food, are you still going to get that six-pack because you're taking those vitamins? Uh, no, not going to happen. If it was that easy, wouldn't we all have six-packs? <laughs> yeah. Salesmen who attended a voluntary training sold more than salesmen who did not attend. So just because they attend a voluntary training, does that cause them to sell more? What if they sit in their house? after they go to this voluntary training and don't do anything, are they still going to sell more? No. What do they have to do? Get out, and work. Get out and work. Exactly. So every day news articles report on data and claims like the ones above. The data and claims are true, but causation has not been proven. Discuss why the variables in each claim may not be cause and effect. So we've already talked about that. So it's important to be a skeptic. Don't just automatically believe everything you hear in articles and advertisements because they're trying to persuade you. Uh, data can be used to persuade you into assuming causation. Watch out for studies based on observations or collecting data. These studies do not have a control group, like advertisements. Nine out of ten people lost 30 pounds by taking this supplement. You need to pay attention to those things. Be a skeptic. Don't just go right along with what they say. Ask questions. Um, you have to have a control group. You got to have a large enough sample. Many times it's nearly impossible to have a control group and often unethical. All right, let's look at the next page. Go ahead and read the next page. Correlation, a statistical way to measure the relationship between two sets of data. So all you're doing is looking at the two, two variables together, like our linear regression that we did. We were looking at X and Y, the relationship between them means that both things are observed at the same time. So you can observe them, but that doesn't mean one caused the other. So this is just relationship. Relationship between X and Y. Relationship between cells and your mustache link. Doesn't mean one caused the other though. Causation means that one thing will cause the other. So this is your cause and effect. In statistics, um, we look into cause and effect relationships, and you have to have a lot of supporting data to prove that one causes the other. You can't just say it's true because it looks true. You've got to actually do some tests on the data. You can have correlation without causation. So there's a correlation or relationship between the number of firemen fighting a fire and the size of the fire. The more firefighters at the scene mean there is a bigger fire. So is that true? Does one cause the other? 
But what about the opposite? What if there's a bigger fire? Is that going to cause you to bring more firefighters, more trucks? Yeah. So the opposite is true. But does bringing more firemen cause the fire to increase? No. No. All right. So I want you to look at these examples and decide whether there's causation in them. So go ahead and read those to yourself. All right, what do y'all think about the first one? College students were more likely to vote than their peers who are not in school. Correlation. One doesn't cause the other. What about the next one? More trash in the hallways after Monday than Tuesday. Correlation. One doesn't cause the other. You hit your little brother and he cries. <laughs> yeah, definitely causation. You caused him to cry. You're so mean. All right, let's talk about positive, negative, and no correlation. So we are going to talk more about R tomorrow, but we are going to introduce it today. So correlation is measured by a correlation coefficient R. R is the number between negative 1 and 1. So here's the scale of R. If R is 0, then that means there is no correlation, no relationship at all. Our calculator will actually find what R is for us. For us, we're gonna learn that um, tomorrow or Thursday. <clears throat> the higher the R value, the closer it is to one, the stronger the correlation is. So if it's one, it's going to be a straight line. Um, M is going to be positive, so it's going to be a line scatter plot with a positive correlation. So it's an incline. The closer it gets to one, the straighter the line. If it's not a very straight line, that means that your dots are kind of all over the place like this one. This is still positive, right? But it's not in a straight line like this one. So this would be strong correlation. R would equal one here. On this one, R is positive, but it's not in a straight line. So R could actually equal 0 0.8 or 0 0.5. It's in a straight line going uphill, but it's kind of scattered a little bit. And then if it's all over the place, this is no correlation. They have no relationship to each other whatsoever. And if it's going downhill, like this one, and it's in a straight line, R is negative one. This next one, it's going downhill because it's not scattered like this one. So it is a negative, but it's not very strong. So let's say it's negative four, point four, sorry. R can be anywhere from negative one to positive one, which they actually gave us the numbers here. So you would estimate it according to how they look. Um, so this one is 
in a straight line. So it's one, this one's in a straight line. It's one, but it's negative because it's going downhill. And then these, these two, you kind of guess at it. We're going to actually use our calculator to find this specific value though. So these are just kind of guesstimates. All right. So um, this is how they'll look. What about the negative correlation? It's going to be a line, scatter plot, but going downhill. Your slope would be negative because it's a negative correlation. So for positive, it'll be as one increases, the other one is increases. So like X increases, Y is going to increase. So your two variables would both be positive. So here's kind of like a cheat sheet for us to determine if it's a positive or a negative correlation. A negative correlation as X increases, Y is going to decrease, go downhill. So this is going to help us on looking at variables and words to see if it's positive, negative, or no correlation. No correlation means it doesn't even make sense. It's confusing. So let's go to these examples. The number of hours you work versus the amount of money in your bank account. So number of hours you work. So let's say you work more hours. So I'm going to put a positive above work. What's going to happen to the money in your bank account? It should go up. Yeah. So that's positive, positive. So they're both the same. So this is a positive correlation. B, number of hours workers receive safety training versus the number of accidents on the job. So let's say they make you do more and more hours of safety training. So let's make that positive. What should happen to the accidents? It should go down, yeah. So see how these are different? As safety training increases, number of accidents decrease because they're being told, hey, if you do this, you could get hurt. So this would be a negative correlation because as one increases, the other one decreases. Number of hour or uh, number of students at Roswell versus the number of students at Milton. Does that even make sense? No. So that's a no correlation. The number of heaters sold versus the months in order from February to July. So as the months go on, so let's say this is positive. Months are going on. Right? What's happening to the heater sold? It's going down. It's going to go down because February, they might have quite a few. What's going to happen in March? They're yeah, they're going to stop buying because what's happening to the weather? It's getting yep, it's getting warmer. So months increase, number of heaters sold decreases. So this would be a negative correlation. E, the number of rice dishes eaten and the number of cars on I-85 throughout the day. No. Yeah, that is, that's confusing. That doesn't even make sense. The number of calories burned or lost versus the number of hours worked. So as your calories burned or as you walk, walk more, what's happening to your calories burned? Increase. It's going to increase. 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 Calories burned. Calories are going to decrease. But, the calories but you still have calories. Calories, calories burned. Yeah. Yeah. So this would be a positive correlation. The more you walk, the more calories you burn. Okay, let me pass out the other bowl. bowl. Okay, so you should have this paper folded. And you're going to end up cutting these. But let's go ahead and write a couple of things down. 
So a reminder of positive correlation. So on a scatter plot, it's going to look like it's going uphill. So put uphill scatter plot. So it looks like the slope is positive. So if you were to find it, your slope would be positive. So a way to look at variables that are written in words as X increases, Y increases. So a negative correlation would be a downhill scatter plot. Looks like it's going downhill. So if it's going downhill, your variables will go the opposite direction. So as X increases, Y decreases. What if they both decrease? Uh, so as it'd be the same, but could you flip it around and make one of them increase and do it, um, do it that way. If they're going the same direction at the same time, it's positive. So even if they both decrease at the same time, then that's a positive correlation. If they're different, they're going different ways. One increases, the other one decreases. That's negative. No correlation. Your scatter plot's just going to be random, randomized. So random looking scatter plot. It doesn't have any one direction it's going. It's not going uphill or downhill. It's kind of all over the place. So whenever you have a no correlation, there is no relationship between X and Y. So what you are going to do now is cut out your graphs and your descriptions and Open this up, and you're going to put all the positive correlations on top, negative correlations in the middle, and no correlations on the bottom. And you can do it all the way across. And y'all can work together with your table. Something you do need to pay attention with your graph is your X and Y variable. Make sure you, once you cut it out, that you uh, orientate it correctly. Okay, make sure to finish this, and tomorrow we will finish talking about it. So if you want to go ahead and tape it in, you can.